Welcome to First Lutheran Church in Lake City, Minnesota on this Wednesday, the 24th of February in our midweek Lenten devotion. I'm Pastor Tim, and I have the honor of serving with Dapper Dan here, who, who um, looks fantastic as always, <laughs> Pastor Dwayne Hulse. Thank you, so, Dwayne. You're welcome, Dwayne. It's good to have all of you with us today. Yeah. Uh, our Lenten image for our devotion this week is this little statue of praying hands. I'm going to set that right down in front of the cross here. And uh, prayer is, is central to who we are as Christians. And uh, during this uh, time of uh, Lenten devotions, we're taking a look at some of the Psalms. And they are basically prayers. There's the prayer book uh, of the Jewish faith, and, and many of them were set to music. So I thought it was appropriate to have some praying hands here. Uh, maybe, we, you know, during Lent we can uh, make a more special emphasis on prayer. Uh, you know, whatever we need to, to pray about, uh, we can feel confident that God will hear and answer our prayers. It's just a really good spiritual practice. Well, and it's one of the things that I so much appreciate about you is prayer is such a vital, important part of your life. And that's been a really good witness to me, a good model. So thanks. Well, thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Well, let us uh, pray our uh, a prayer of uh, penitence and forgiveness now. And uh, we'll invite you along the way to join us. Let us pray. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another, and before the whole company of heaven, that we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Join us. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O God. God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, envy, hypocrisy and apathy that have infected our lives we confess to you have, have mercy, mercy on us O god. god our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people we confess to you have, have mercy, mercy on us O god. god our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us we confess to you, have, have mercy, mercy on us, O God. God, our neglect of human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. We confess to you, have, have mercy, mercy on us, us O God. God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you, have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us, O God. God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear yes, us, O God, God for, for your mercy is great. great. Amen. Well, today we are continuing our focus on the Psalms, and uh, today's psalm is a very unique psalm in the, in the psalm books, and it is Psalm 22. So if you have your Bibles, you can open up to Psalm 22, and uh, we're going to be watching a video now, and then we're going to be reflecting on that afterwards. So we hope you enjoy it. It's the nightmare I have again and again. Always the same. 
and I'm terrified. I'm running through the forest. The moon isn't bright enough. The branches cut my arms. I don't know which way I'm going. I, I just know something is behind me. Something evil. So I run. It's bone chilling cold. I just want to wake up from this dream to find shelter, but there is none. To find light, but it's only dark. Then through the desolation, I feel hope. And as I get closer, I sense him waiting for me. His heart open, so I fall shaking, shivering into the Father's presence. He lets me stay there. He tells me everything is okay. There's nothing chasing me any longer. I am safe in my God. Eventually, he will release me and put me back in the world, but it won't be the same because he will be there with me forever. The way campfire smoke stays on my clothes, the way the touch of my childhood blanket could bring me back to a safe place, the way I'll never forget how to find my way home because he is my home. He is my refuge. I am protected. I am rescued. I have been through the dark night of the forest and I have found my way back. And he will never let me go. You know, I'm not quite sure you know what that video on Psalm 22 was all about. I had a little difficulty following some of that. What, what, how do you respond to that? Well, you know, I, I love Psalm 22. And um, the video for me was uh, a helpful reminder of the, and I love the word that popped out of hope in right. that. And it was kind of like centrally located in the video and it's that that hope that i think in psalm 22 the psalmist is clinging to is this 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 hope that god is not going to abandon them because I, I think there are many times in our life when we feel like we're running and um and and sometimes it's because we feel like something's chasing us or just life is just so crazy and god seems a long ways away and we feel like we're on our own running and running on our own um, and the psalm um, has this beautiful way of reminding us that God is present with us. And maybe my critique of the video might be that I think God is in the wilderness running with us. Oh, yeah. You know, that we don't have to get someplace in order to get God. God is already there. And in fact, God goes ahead of us and is already into our future. And that's one of the things I love about that Psalm 22 is it ends with, with this focus of, of God going ahead of us and being in the future. And, and, and once we get there, we recognize that God's been there all along. Yeah, I think that's what's difficult for us to see. Yeah. We, we don't realize that he, he's there. But I, I like the, the image uh, he talked about, you know, God's presence. He said, I, I felt his presence and I can't escape it. It's like, uh, he said, it's like the smoke from the campfire that yeah. comes into my clothing. Well, once it's in your clothing, you can't escape it. And I love it. It goes That's with you. Right, right. Yeah. And I love that smell. I like that good image. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that he is here and you, you can't, you can't. Uh, yeah, and that is really a powerful image, isn't it? I mean, all of us that have been around a campfire know that that smoke lingers with you. Some people don't like those campfires for that reason. And, and it does just stay with you. And it, you go everywhere with it. Yeah, that's a great image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that part. And then you said something about hope. Mm -hmm. You know, that uh, things really changed for him. He, was, he just uh, 
felt desperate, running away, hoping this terrible nightmare would end. And then for some reason, it really didn't show it in the video, but he got this hope. Mm -hmm. He felt God's presence. And so uh, I guess that's who we are as Christians. We are people of hope. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, you know, and this Psalm 22 is always a special psalm for me because it's the psalm that I have read on Monday, Thursday, when at the end of the worship service, when the lights go down and just the lights in the front of the church are, are displayed on the altar area. And I start reading that psalm and then the altar guild comes and they start stripping everything away. And, it, and it's really, you know, Christ is stripped of all of his power and now is in the hands of his captors is the image of that. But there is this, this powerful feeling when you're watching it or even when you're reading that psalm and everything is, is being stripped away and, and bare. And, and um, the psalm keeps on flopping back and forth, flipping back and forth from uh, despair to hope, despair to hope, despair to hope, and ends with hope. And I, I just have always loved that psalm and think of Jesus all the time when I heard that. I'm glad you just mentioned this last part, the flip-flopping uh, of, of having a, a, a problem, a situation that seems hopeless, but then it comes around to seeing, you know, that God is there. And I think a lot of the Psalms are like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a good thing to pay attention to as you read through them. Uh, at times, the writer seems really desperate and down, and, and uh, but by the end of the Psalm, he's uh, expressing his, his faith in God and thanking him you know so yeah. I think that's a good good thing to, to remember as you read through the song well there is a kind of feeling when we're in the midst of the feeling bad and everything's falling apart in our life we're in the middle of the woods and we're running that that's gonna last forever you know right. like like many people feel that way right now with the, the pandemic that this is the way it's always gonna be but you know there is hope coming and just to hold on to that and to know that God's in the midst of all of it is just a real powerful thing. Yeah, that he is, he's here with us Yeah, the whole time, even though we may not feel it. Yeah. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your strong presence in our life. We know that you always go ahead of us to get our futures ready and so that when we live into it and we finally get there, we recognize and see that you have been there all along. So we pray for your presence in our life this day and in this Lenten season. No matter what it is that we're going through, no matter what dreams haunt us or what, what feelings that we have of things chasing us or behind us, your presence is with us, and it is true. You are never going to let us go. We thank you for your strong love and for your faithfulness and for what you endured uh, in your rejection and suffering and crucifixion and dying on the cross for us, that we may know in the darkest of our days we are not alone and that hope is coming and in fact is right around the corner thank you god for this time together and we pray your blessing on us and those that we love and those that we don't know this day in jesus name we pray amen, amen. our father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world to serve God with gladness and with courage holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
We hope you have a blessed week, and please join us again next Wednesday.